Hello and welcome for the quick tutorial on how to add contacts to an incident report. You'll notice that I'm on the main page of an incident report here and I have that information all completed. When I'm ready to add contacts I'll navigate to the left hand side and select contact and then you can add a person, business, animal, or agency rep if you had an outside agency respond such as a police department. So for this our um, example incident is an assault so I'm going to add a person. And th this is the main page for adding a contact. So the first thing you need to do is select uh, the contact type and it gives you many different options here. You can select the best that applies. We're going to go ahead and do the suspect first. And then it, here it gives you the option to make it an unknown contact or a known contact. If it's an unknown contact, it takes away this name information and what it gives you is descriptors. And what this will do is allow security administration to try to match this to actual individuals that we have throughout the system. Um, but if it is a known contact, um, you can just switch back here and it will give you the options to input all that information. Now all of these are text fields or drop downs so you can just put in all the information that applies wherever it does. You'll notice library card number here, more descriptors down here, phone numbers, address, date of birth, first name, last name, middle name. Now this is a smart system so if I start to input somebody that we've had an incident report on before, for example we'll use Luther, if I click out the system is going to automatically search for individuals matching that last name that we've had contacts with in the past. I'll check that this is the right person and it is. This is the individual I dealt with. I'll click here and something's going to happen. So you'll notice first thing that happens is this this alert pops up um, that we this this customer in the past has been combative with assault on staff. So it gives you a cautionary alert. Uh, Security administration has the ability to add these to individuals. It can be a combative. Um, it can be a medical alert to let us know if we've had somebody pass out in a location before. Um, all sorts of different types of alerts that we can add to these. If they're a trespasser, so there's multiple different options, but it's just notifying you click OK. And the great thing is, is you'll notice it just went ahead and populated all that information for me. First name, last name, all the address, library card number, all the descriptors. Of course, if it changes, you can change it. Or if it has changes, have, has changed, you can change it and update it. Um, but if not, you're good to go. So I've filled out this main page. I can go ahead and save it. And you'll notice that you have some more options up here, detained, injured, force used, or evicted. So if any of these apply, you can go ahead and click it. And a corresponding tab will pop up right here. So additional info is always there. You can click on that. And this is where we want to put in anything additional. Do they have a feature, uh, clothing, mark, deformity, scar, tattoo? Uh, any known associates, cautions, um, do they go by other alias names or nicknames or other ID numbers if they're known to use multiple other library cards so that all that information can be entered here. Under evicted restraining order this is where we will put our eviction information. So the eviction issue date is today and it's for an assault so we will go one year from today go ahead and select that if there's a police reference number any other additional information that you want to add here you can put the reason as the assault on a, another customer And any additional comments that you may have. Um, so we'll go ahead and save that. And that contact is completely in entered. So what you'll notice is up here under contact we currently have one. So we're going to say that there's a victim in this instance since there um, there was a suspect. So if you click on add contact I can add another person. This will be the victim. And for this we're going to say, first we'll select victim, and we'll say that we don't know who the victim was, so we can do unknown contact, 
and it changes the information here. So real quick, I'll just select a few things. age slender description on clothing blue jeans and gray hoodie if there's any distinguishing features um, we'll say a tattoo rows on left shoulder. We'll add that. See it populates here and then you can add any known associates, alias nicknames, any other details that you may know. Um, so it was an assault so we're also going to say, I'm going to do a quick save. Um, we're going to say that this individual was injured. And you'll notice that the Injured tab pops up here, so I can enter that information real quick. And here are all the options for an injury. A um, lot of information that you can put in here. It's not all required, but if you know it, it's real good to document it. Um, so was it an employee injury? No, this was a customer. Um, what was the inju injury type? We're going to say... laceration, injury stash, or injury status was severe, we're gonna say on the head, and then laceration on head from a punch, wearing glasses, wearing contacts, carrying packages, all this types of inf all this type of information you can put in. Was there a physical device? Did you offer first aid? Yes or no. Was it refused? Yes or no. Were they transported to the hospital? We're going to say yes. And then um, hospital options won't be in there. Ambulance called, ambulance arrived, time of transport, and then you can also diagram the injury as well. So you can in input some um, descriptors here and then diagram the injury. It'll pop up here and we'll say the laceration was right here across the head. Save and close. And it'll keep all of that. So some of these um, you can do free text, other ones are drop downs. Um, and then you can also check up here if any of these apply as well. Slurred speech, odor of alcohol, staggered gait, or some bloodshot eyes. So we've got all the information we want in here. I'll go ahead and click Save. And you'll notice that our second contact, it's now registering to, and we have the suspect and the victim both attached to the report. So it's looking good.